Hey everyone, Vince here, Sabre Jiu-Jitsu Blue Belt, and... Drea, Sabre Jiu-Jitsu Brown Belt. And today we're going to talk about privates, aka Jiu-Jitsu privates. What are they? Do they help? How much do they cost? And our experience with them. So, what are Jiu-Jitsu privates? Um, private lessons are basically one-on-one -on -one sessions with an instructor. Usually it's a black belt, um, and it's a time for you to ask a lot of questions kind of dig into your their brain help ask them about how you're doing maybe and um, where you can improve you can also use it as a time to learn certain techniques from the certain black belt that you're having the private with there's a lot of people that have great technique and a lot of times privates come from that from you asking you know hey can I learn this from you and so you have a one-on-one -on -one session other times it's just to dig deeper into your understanding of jujitsu and you know if you have trouble with a certain technique or you're new to a type of technique like an open guard or something like that that you don't usually use it can be a time very quality time to have that one-on-one -on -one with someone who can um, see how you're moving right right in front of them and have them direct you and have them instruct you to to learn better and to, to understand the movements better so jiu-jitsu privates, they're usually about an hour to an hour and a half long, again, taken with a black belt, uh, and they do cost a little bit of money. I've seen them range, personally, the privates that I've taken, they usually range from $30 an hour to $150. I've seen it go as high as $150 to $200 an hour. It really just depends on who you're taking privates with. Mm -hmm. um, usually the, the black belt that I'm taking privates with, I'll usually buy 10 at a time. So. The more that I buy, the cheaper it is. And again, it's usually about an hour to an hour and a half. Sometimes it ble even bleeds into like an hour and 45 minutes or two hours. And then with that as well, with the privates, uh, you can usually split that cost with somebody else too. So sometimes it's like a, it would be like a small group. Um, and then you can do a private with two to three people. So that's very common uh, when we're talking about jujitsu privates as well. Yeah. And I failed to mention that it doesn't always have to be a black belt. It can mm -hmm. be an upper belt of your choosing somebody that you train with that, you know, you've noticed their game is great and um, they seem to advance in positions that you don't, that you're not mm -hmm. able to. So you're trying to learn like, well, what are they doing that I'm not doing? So yeah, so it could be a brown belt, like, you know, anybody, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then usually like for me, and I'll ask you this question as well, you know, how do you go about choosing the brown or black belt that you want to take privates with? So for me, um, at Sabre, I take privates with a black belt named Dustin. And uh, I got to know him a little bit off the mat, and I was like, okay, this is a guy that seems really cool. Our personalities mesh well together. Um, so that was the first thing. And then the second thing was he's also roughly my size. Right. Like he, I'm, I'm 135 pounds ish. He's right around that same. And I was watching him do things to bigger opponents. And I was like, oh, like <laughs> I want to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's what really I was like, okay, let me ask him about privates. And then that started the relationship. Um, so, you know, same question to you, mm -hmm. you know, how would you go about picking someone that you want to take privates with? Yeah. I mean, it really depends on the person right now where I'm at um, I've taken privates with people because I know um, their experience and um, their game and them using their jiu-jitsu within the competition and very and doing very well and excelling in that so um, and for example like um, with me lately like the last I would say maybe six to eight months I've focused a lot on nogi so I've taken some nogi privates and learning um, certain leg attacks and defenses entries um, just utilizing that game and which was very fitting because now IBJJF is changing the rules for brown and black belts and they're allowing certain type of leg attacks that they used to deem illegal so I talked to a certain amount of people or a certain black belt and was like hey can you teach me this and so over time, like I feel like that has really helped me improve mm -hmm. with that type of with that area of the game. Yeah. So yeah, it just depends on what you're looking for, what you're trying to add to your arsenal, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, and it just depends on what you're looking for right now with your jujitsu. So yeah, yeah. and I, and I will say this: like I normally take privates with Dustin. He's my main <laughs> private instructor. Uh, though, you know, whenever I go visit another city, like when I'm in San Diego, I usually will take like one private 
with the head instructor at a gym too so that's pretty common like if you're going and visiting you can do like a small group or a private so there's just a way for uh to aid in our learning right yeah. because it's, yeah. it's a different type of game and it's just so that we can try to absorb their knowledge yeah because uh, totally. we're not usually there yeah like i was just in philly and we had a private with a uh, christian woodmansey from logic mm -hmm. And it was a nogi private, and we got to ask him questions. And we did gear the private towards the person I was with. You know, you were just talking about group privates. And mm -hmm. so me and another girl were doing the private, and she was competing. So I had her be the focus and, like, ask all your questions because you're the one that's going to compete in, in pretty soon. But, yeah, so group privates are great, mm -hmm. too. Just that one-on-one -on -one quality time because in a class setting, you'll have your instructor who has to tend to, like, 30 people or more. And so it's hard to get... You know that focus from them and which it makes sense i mean they have to uh, pay attention to the whole mm -hmm. class so it's nice to have the private where you can actually ask your instructor or um, a visiting instructor sometimes they come in and do seminars or if you're visiting a place mm -hmm. but just to get that those eyes on you for that hour yeah. where they can help you out and see the little flaws maybe and little areas that you may need work yeah and you know, with that being said as well, you're a brown belt now. Mm -hmm. So when did you start taking privates? Do you still take privates? Uh, how often, like, did you take privates then? And then how often are you taking them now? Um, I have always taken privates, but not regularly. Mm -hmm. I never purchased, like, a package of privates, mm -hmm. but it was more so... Um, well, I kind of got lucky. I should rewind when... Brian Ted opened the academy we were a small school so a lot of times classes were like you know a few people yeah. so it always kind of felt like a private yeah. which was nice and that helped my growth because he got to focus on each person that was there mm -hmm. and really um, get to see how, you know where we weren't understanding and where we needed help so that in itself was kind of like privates to me yeah. throughout my white belt times um, as time went on I usually would take privates with um, people that came in for seminars and if I attended the seminar and I enjoyed it and I felt like you know I want to pick their brain then I would ask them you mm -hmm. know if are you doing privates and then I would take a private I still do take privates um, I just had one like a couple weeks ago um, in Philly like I was saying and mm -hmm. I think that you can always benefit from privates because there's always more to learn you're not ever going to max out on your knowledge of jiu-jitsu yeah. especially when everyone has different types of techniques and how they do things mm -hmm. And if that's something that you've noticed and, you know, notice that it works for one thing mm -hmm. when they're when they're training or, you know, if you watch them in a competition and then, you know, you're feeling like I want to learn how to do that. Then, of course, you're going to ask for a private no matter like where you are yeah. in your belts, you know, in your journey. Yeah. So it's always going to be something I would say to look for. Yeah, to look yeah. to look to learn more from somebody that's yeah. more experienced. And that's another thing, too. It's about experience. Like mm -hmm. you can have a black belt that's been you know, black belt for 10 years versus someone who's been like 15, 20, 30 years. So there's always more to learn. Yeah, yeah definitely. And for me, the my experience with privates is, well, depending on your academy and how they structure their curriculum mm -hmm. also plays a role into it as well. Like usually for us, for in the week, it's, uh, you know, Monday through Saturday, the classes will be focused on one sort of, not necessarily technique, but mm -hmm. one, uh, like we're going to do arm bars this week. So how to do arm bars how to escape from arm bars and arm bars arm bars arm bars but uh w that's usually what the week is focused on so for me when i when i was a white belt and i was i was coming in here uh and i started taking privates it really helped um you know dustin was able to fill in a lot of blanks because right. that week we would just be doing arm bars but it's like i would get caught in triangles like how do i how do i right. get out of a triangle exactly. right so yeah I, i'm able to bring all my questions to dustin each and each time that uh, I would take a private with him right. and at that point I mean regularly I would take privates once at least once a week sometimes twice a week and that really helped because he was able to answer all of my questions in super in super detail because I'd be like well why am I getting swept here or it's because you, you're not shifting your weight here and then mm -hmm. he's able to go into like in depth so that's what I really like about my privates with Dustin plus when i started my privates with him we started from the most basic like closed guard right and then each and every private we would do like three to five techniques and then we would drill and then uh then we would roll so and then he would be able to give me some feedback during our uh, after our roll and 
with each private, it built and built and built. So it started from a closed guard, and then it was, okay, how do you sweep them? Right. right? right. And then once you sweep them, you know, and then let's say you're in mounts, and then from mounts, you know, what can you do? And then mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of, uh, what I liked about our privates was, uh, I, we, we were able to structure it in a way that it was con- ever connecting, right? Mm-hmm. So it was like closed guard to the mount. chain sequence. Yeah, the chain yeah. sequence, and mm-hmm. it always go from one or the other. Right. And then right. once you take, I don't know, 10 to 15 privates, you, you now you have a, like like two to three moves that you could do from that black belt, you know, mm-hmm. that they taught. So right, right. I feel like it's really aided in my, just in my progression with jiu-jitsu. Yeah, totally. and, and I don't, like, so someone asked, you know, well, do privates help more than regular classes? Um, in As of a day-to-day thing, mm-hmm. like, if you can afford to take privates, like, yeah. As much as you would take classes, like go for it. Yeah. But it's important to come into class too, yeah. um, to get the setting to a, a class and then training with everyone because what you're getting out of the group setting is the training. You know, the community yeah. of people rolling and you're rolling with all these different bodies and that in itself helps your jujitsu. Rolling with small people, rolling with big people, people who are inflexible, people who are super flexible, mm-hmm. um, heavier, lighter, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. all of it. But um, I wouldn't say like to just take privates alone, but could right. you learn with privates alone? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But the average person wouldn't be able to always have um, privates alongside of mm. like a class. So, you know, it, it, because, you know, that's just a lot of money. But if you yeah. have it and can invest in it, I would. Yeah. I totally would. If you could do privates throughout the week as well as attend classes. Because yeah. you'll only get better from doing that. Yeah. Um, well, you mentioned earlier about like privates when you were starting off. And I feel like it's a huge... Um, benefit like if you can invest in privates when you start because it will build your foundation Mm. of jujitsu and that's kind of hard to find on your own when you're coming into class and you just like you said you learn a technique like hey it's arm bars and let's say someone's brand new they're like well you know I've only done arm bars like never (laughs) or like or once you know so you do it that week and you get better but you realize like man if I could maybe get a couple privates and focus on that yeah. then my foundation of arm bars would be much better then I would understand this class more yeah so it really does help supplement that yeah and and I and then you just said it that was where that popped into my head was it's supplemental to you coming to class right so what I like about my privates is um, usually with the privates it, it is one-on-one instruction and I, I'm able to bring all my questions right right um, not only that but you know when you go to regular class that's when you can get your rolls in. So like, let's say you go to class five days a week and then you do uh, three rolls each, three five minute rolls. That's 15 rolls for five minutes. That's a lot of time of things that can happen right. of like, I'm getting submitted, I'm getting swept. Right. And then I take all of those questions mm-hmm. and bring them to your bring into, <laughs> bring into him and I'm like, Poor okay, <laughs> I got swept here. I, I got submitted here. This and this happened and he's able like, to answer. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, it, do, it feels okay. like I, you know. That's No, that's perfect actually. Yeah. That's what I feel like one reason why you should have privates mm-hmm. is your, you know, your instructor, the one that owns a the gym, they're not going to be able to answer, you know, 15 questions yeah. from everybody. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, you got to think about it that way, too. It's like, well, if I have so many questions, it's not that I shouldn't ask my instructor, but if I have that many, maybe I should consider purchasing yeah. a private from them yeah. so that I can get that one-on-one time with them and not waste their time. Not, you know, you're yeah. not wasting their time, but you're taking up a lot of time if you have right. that many questions all the time. Because so. there, there's a lot that goes into jiu-jitsu, and right. it's, it, it's minor things, but it's, or it's minor and major things, mm-hmm. but there can be a lot of questions. And for me... Uh, I think something that's helped me and just me being self-aware and knowing myself, I work uh, better in an environment where I can ask questions. So, yes. you know, when when I'm taking a private, I'm paying for that private. So it's like... You don't feel guilty. Yeah, I don't feel guilty about <laughs> yeah. bringing 50 questions, right? Yeah, right? No, totally. Um, and then for me, I just see it as an investment in myself, right? Mm-hmm. Because it, it really is that it's, it's the same thing when I buy a book. It's the same thing when I buy like clothes or you know what anything that i buy nowadays yeah. it's an investment towards myself right. and right. Right. um it's one of those things where like i personally love taking privates and obviously it depends on your situation mm-hmm. right like mm-hmm. um your financial situation but do you learn better that way mm-hmm. um and then also i get this question a lot too of you know like uh, how often do i need to take privates well like for me it's more of a consistency thing right. so it, it you don't if, if you take one private 
every other month yeah. it's not very consistent I, right. not not that it's not going to help yeah but i think you know once a week or once every other week mm -hmm. you know that you're getting on a consistent basis and then i also something that helps me is i take notes right mm -hmm. Uh, or usually or you can videotape it. Yeah, people do that too. Exactly. Right? In the form of taking notes, I, I, I video uh, it and I say, hey, can we just film the uh, sequence right after this? And then, you know, we've been drilling the sequence the whole private right. and then we'll just go over it and like, okay, now when I look back on it, okay, it refreshes my memory mm -hmm. a little bit more. Yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely so. would say like it is good to be consistent with the privates. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like sometimes it just depends on the person. Like if you have so many questions and they get answered and you learn from that, you know, a couple times and you're good and you might purchase another few sessions later. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you can invest in it, there's value there yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, I noticed, or not noticed, but I heard you um, mention one thing about like rolling in class mm -hmm. and everything. And um, and I would say that like not alone, not just um, privates, but... Um, when you're a newer, I should say, mm -hmm. and you come into class and, um, you know, you have kind of like a variety of belts levels, right? You'll see white belts, blue belts, purple, brown, black. As a new person, and I did this, you know, coming up was I always tried to pair myself up with an upper belt as yeah. much as I could, whether it be rolling or drilling or just like even like when we're done with class and people are hanging out. I would always ask questions because mm -hmm. you know if the instructor was busy I had these upper belts who were always willing to help yeah. and most people want to share their jiu-jitsu yeah. and what they know so it's really it's really a good way for you especially like you're you're like a college student and you're not able to afford a bunch of privates or, or whatever it is just financially you're not able to do that there are a ton of upper belts I'm sure in every school that would yeah. love to help you so if you can keep that in mind, like, hey, I'm going to look for an upper belt today to be my drilling partner. Yeah. When you're drilling the moves and the technique of the day, they can yeah. right then and there correct you. And then also when you're rolling, you know, you can ask questions at the end of the roll. Like if you rolled with yeah. a brown belt and you're like, how was it? Like, what can I work on? You know, so you're yeah. always looking to, to basically get better. Yeah. And that's part of it is by asking questions. So. Yeah, I, yeah, I make sure to ask every single role no matter who it is like you know hey how, how'd, how'd that feel like or especially if they submitted me like hey right. what what did i do wrong mm -hmm. or like how did you set that up and they're, they're always willing to give feedback and um yeah and then something that you just mentioned was you know like staying after class and asking questions right so usually i usually will when class is normal i go to class stay after and then i'll just ask one question one question to one person right but then you come five days a week, that's five <laughs> questions that you can ask somebody. So you're getting yeah. like these mini privates, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So that's how I would always treat it because uh, people are more, are like super helpful and they, they want to help you. So, yeah. um, and then so. Most people do because they yeah. want you to be able to, to get better at it, mm -hmm. you know, and they want to see you succeed and learn how to defend yeah. yourself. And if they don't want to help you, I'd be yeah, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that's kind of odd. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> Awkward, that would be odd. Most yeah. people, most people do. Some yeah. people don't have time though, you know, so it's just, you yeah. know, look for the ones who are willing. Yeah. And most of the time, if they're purple belt and above, they probably, and if you're a white belt or blue belt, mm. they probably have a lot to be able to share with you. That's really yeah. legit. So, yeah. 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 Sweet. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Jared. Yeah, this is sure. really fun. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, another episode of BJJ. So see you all later. Bye.